Invincible Season 1 was pretty great. It plays with superhero tropes in an interesting way and delivers something new in the process. One of the most interesting moments was when Omni-Man, this universe's stand-in for Superman, explained why he murdered the Guardians of the Globe, a knockoff Justice League. He had previously explained that he was an alien, a Viltrumite, who was sent to protect Earth, but instead he reveals that he was sent to weaken it. Viltrum is a perfect place, but only in their definition of the word. Viltrumites fought to the death until only the strongest survived. Then, they began colonizing other worlds in an attempt to control the universe. This battle to the death is like a faster version of eugenics. Eugenics is the practice or advocacy of improving the human species by selectively mating people with specific desirable hereditary traits. It comes from two Greek words, eu meaning good and genix meaning growth or come into being, and it generally has two forms. Positive eugenics means encouraging people with desirable traits to breed, and the word positive doesn't mean that this is good necessarily, and negative eugenics means discouraging people with negative traits from breeding. It aims to reduce human suffering by breeding out disease, disabilities, and so-called undesirable characteristics from the human population. It was coined by Francis Dalton, cousin of Charles Darwin, in the late 1800s. In the years since, it has been used to justify racism, classism, sterilization, and genocide. One of the most famous examples is the Holocaust, where the Nazis murdered an estimated 6 million Jews and 1 million others in pursuit of creating the master race. But it's been used all over the world, including in present-day America. And my problem with Invincible is that the show implies that eugenics works. Let me be clear, eugenics does not work. It is widely regarded as a pseudoscience today. There are too many variables involved in seeking out desired traits, and you can't always get everything you want. For example, sickle cell disease is a genetic disease that actually creates immunity to malaria, a disease with no known cure. Also, eugenics by definition reduces the genetic diversity of a population, which makes them more susceptible to new diseases. But more importantly in eugenics is which traits become desired in the first place. This determination will always be done by the people in power, and it disproportionately affects different groups. Many early IQ tests were used to show white American superiority, even though the test relied on vocabulary and cultural references, things that immigrants especially would not be well versed in. Intelligence in general is highly subjective, and often tied to class. Let's tie this to superheroes in general. Most superheroes defend the status quo, and the status quo inherently upholds the people already in power. Superheroes need someone to fight as well, and so the villains often embody what American society deems the villains of real life whether intentionally or not. Dr. Frederick Wortham, whose book Seduction of the Innocent inspired new regulations over the content of comics, said this, Superman needs an endless stream of ever new sub-men, criminals, and foreign-looking people not only to justify his existence, but even to make it possible. Either they, children, fantasy themselves as supermen, with the attendant prejudices against the sub-men, or it makes them submissive and receptive to the landishments of strong men, who will solve all their problems for them, by force. There is a decent amount of people for whom media like movies, TV shows, and comics are their only exposure to specific groups. So things like Mad Max Fury Road using physical disabilities as shorthand for dehumanizing its villains, various movies using bisexuality to show ambiguous, monstrous, or manipulative moral character, and media in general using obesity to show how a person is gross, all have an effect. Superheroes are portrayed putting these same criminals into jail over and over again. And this changes public perception. If it truly seems like a group of people will cause nothing but hurt and they cannot change, then it almost makes sense to find a way to stop them forever. And I'm to the point that I think society has to come to a thresh threshold where there's some people that aren't worth saving. We need to build warehouses to put these people into it and lock them away for the rest of their lives. From truly, at least some of these males going out and getting 10 other women pregnant and having small children. You yourself were forced to have an IUD fitted.
Unfortunately, a criminal is someone who has broken the law as determined by a particular government at that time. We need to be critical of who our heroes are fighting and why. What features are used to make them seem evil, like disabilities, gender, race, weight, and what does that say about those groups? It can be really easy to unintentionally use stereotypical characters or to use prejudices that you may not have even known that you had. I was happy seeing this particular ideology as the villain in Invincible because too often, it can unintentionally be the ideology of the hero. Eugenics doesn't work, and we don't need it. People aren't inherently immoral because they are poor, disabled, a minority, etc. And just because someone doesn't perfectly fit a particular society's standards doesn't mean that we should kill them or prevent them from having children. Eugenics still exists today, and there's so many more examples that I couldn't fit in this video. The mass death of the 1918 flu pandemic caused 33 states to pass eugenics laws because they feared that the population wasn't strong enough, and I really hope something similar doesn't happen today. We don't have survival of the fittest. Because we don't live in the wild, we live in societies. And the point of living in societies is that we can help each other. We don't have to individually generate our own power, grow our own food, or build our own houses. We have each other.